We live in amazing times. I can grab my phone, take a photo, and instantly that photo shows up on my computer. In fact, I could turn on all of my devices and that photo shows up instantly everywhere. The cloud has just done amazing things to allow us to sync and store files uh, across all of our devices. But using Ableton Live files with the cloud can wreak havoc if you're not following some best practices. So what I thought we would do in this video is take a look at the three ways that we often use the cloud and I'll provide some suggestions and tips for each of those if you're trying to use Ableton Live files with the cloud. So let's dive in and let's get started. Now, the first way that most of us use the cloud is for sync, just like I talked about, that, that concept idea of taking a photo on your phone and it's showing up on your computer and across all your devices. We're all familiar with that. A couple uh, tools and resources that allow you to do that on your computer, Resilio Sync, uh, which I believe used to be BitTorrent Sync, which lets you have a folder on your computer that syncs drops stuff into it and it syncs to another device automatically. I, I think we're all familiar with Dropbox. This was the first time I ever saw this to where uh, you could drag a file into a folder uh, and that's going to then automatically show up on another computer. And the third thing that's really nice is uh, drop uh, is Google Drive. I think we're all familiar with this. Uh, you can download a Google Drive app to your computer uh, and you can have it sync folders and files on your computer uh, automatically. Now, this is a great feature. Essentially, it boils down to a folder, drag things into it, and it automatically shows up everywhere else. Or maybe you click on a folder, right click and say, you know, send this to the cloud. Uh, in fact, if you're using a Mac, uh, Apple has their own built-in solution using iCloud that syncs your desktop and your documents folder um, automatically, which is a really, really nice feature. This is a nice way to drop a file in and automatically send it to other places. But again, there's a couple things that can cause trouble if you're not careful. So number one, when we talk about using cloud for sync, um, here's a couple suggestions I have. One, if you're using this as a method to move files between computers and it's awfully convenient to do that, um, then always make sure you have a hard copy backup just in case. Here's a case in point, perfect example that I see people do all the time. You're in your studio setting, you're working, you're building your file, uh, you've got it ready to go, you drop in your folder, and uh, then you've got your laptop and you're ready to roll and you just run over to the club, to the venue, whatever, uh, wherever you're gonna play. You open your laptop up, expecting that file to be there, and guess what, it's not there. And the reason it's not there is your laptop didn't sync to the internet, or maybe you're on internet, but the internet's really, really slow. It's gonna be really, really nice for you to have a hard drive with a hard copy of that file. So if you're using cloud storage to sync files be between devices, um, then I would highly suggest grab a hard drive and I'll include some links to suggestions for hard drives uh, that I'll mention at the end of this video um, to move that between computers, right? Have that hard drive backup um, uh, to work with so you're not relying just on that. Now, um, it's also super important, I think, to um, make sure that that folder is set up in a way that it doesn't ever remove files from that folder. So for instance, I just recorded a tutorial, which I'll link to in the description of this video, where I showed a common issue on Mac computers. If you have a feature called Optimize Mac Storage, which is built into iCloud, it will you know keep those files on your computer, keep in air quotes, uh, files on your computer, but it's actually removing them and putting them in the cloud and just leaving a little reference file. And oftentimes you'll get frustrated because you go to open a live session you'll know you did collect on save and realize that file's gone. So if you're using a, a, a service that syncs between computers, make sure it's it's going to keep that file there at all times. Make sure it's not gonna try to optimize things um, to uh, take them to the cloud, remove them from your computer. In fact, when I was on the Dropbox page here, Dropbox calls it smart sync, where you right click and say, you know, make this a smart sync so it's not on my computer till I need it. We don't want to use any of those features. So make sure you turn off any smart syncing, any optimizing storage features of that. Uh, that's really going to be important and really helpful. Here's some very practical Ableton Live things. So let's go into Ableton Live here. Uh, if you're using this in this way to move between folders, make sure you're saving your project in a new live set. So if I go up to file here and I do uh, save live set or save Save live set as. Um, if I go to save something new here, see how it's going to drop in this live project folder. What I want to do is go back out a, a, a level higher. Now on a Mac, this is what this looks like. I could go out to my desktop and I could call this new set. Okay. I'm going to hit save and this is going to save this in a new project folder and it's going to create a new Ableton Live set. Now, the other suggestion that I suggest when you're working in, in this sort of context, in this sort of way is doing this. This is super important. Always end your session, end your time working in Ableton Live, going up to the file menu 
doing collect all and save and hitting OK. Now, I never stress about what all those four options say there. I just leave the three of the four options selected and I hit OK. If you're working with factory packs, then sure, go ahead and enable that and hit OK. Um, but you're going to want to do that so that you collect all and save. You get a live project folder that has all your samples in it. And then that's what goes into that folder uh, that then can be synced across your devices. Now, finally, if you're using cloud storage in a syncing type way that I talked about uh, for collaboration, and so you say, hey, I'm working with a, a fellow producer. They live in LA. I live in Austin. I'm going to work on a, a file. I'm going to drop it in Dropbox, and then they're going to be able to open that same file, um, and they're going to be able to open it and work on it. One of the things you have to be very, very careful on, and uh, this is one of those things, again, it can be a little dangerous, is avoiding collisions. And what I mean by a collision is I'm here in Austin, I'm working on my live set, I'm ready to go, uh, I get done. And then at the same time, without me knowing it, my friend in LA, he's working on the same session, open up from that Dropbox folder because we both have the folder synced on our computer and working on the Ableton Live file. And then what you start to get is you get a conflict where Dropbox goes, Dropbox goes, well, we have this version of the file, we have that version of the file. And you end up spending more time than necessary taking some things from this file, taking some things from this file, bringing them together uh, in a new file. Um, you wanna avoid conflict. So here's a pro tip that I suggest. If you're working and collaborating with someone, then implement version control. And here's kind of the old school cheap free version to do that. I would go up to the file menu I would do my work once I'm done, go up to the file menu, do save live set as, and then I would go into my set here and I would add a version number at the end, version one, okay? And if you can venture into the land of spreadsheets, I would encourage you to have a Google sheet. I know this may feel completely anti-creative and you go, why would I have a Google sheet to help me do this? But track that and go, okay, version one is Will's edits. Then my friend in LA, when they go to work on the set, it syncs uh, in Dropbox. And so they go and open version one. And the very first thing they do when they're working on it is they do file, they do save live set as, and they go up here and do version two. And then they start to work and they save and then they report back or put in that Google sheet and say, hey, Will, I'm ready to go. Version two with my edits is up. I open up. Guess what I'm going to do when I get my version of live? I'm going to do save live set as I'm going to go in here and do version three. And I'm going to start there. Now, you may look at that and go, well, Will, that breaks your previous rule of keeping everything in a new live project folder. It does. But if, I, if it's it's all pertains to that one song, if we're working on one song back and forth, I want that in one project folder and all those versions listed out. You may also go, but Will, uh, Ableton Live has a great backup system. Yes, it does. But I'm just telling you that the tech is not typically the problem. It's the dumb humans that's the problem. So implementing this version control thing is really going to help keep things straight when you're working with a collaborator. So if you're using uh, cloud storage in uh, primarily for sync uh, and you're using it for collaborating, implement version control. The second way that we often use cloud storage uh, is for backup and for archiving. So a couple of resources that made me think of this uh, that you're probably familiar with is Backblaze. This is a, a resource I use that basically takes files in your computer and automatically backs them up to the cloud, okay? So it's taking a version, and it's automatically backing up to the cloud. Uh, or you could kind of roll your own solution if you wanted to. I use a tool called Arc Backup as well too. And I use it with something called Wasabi, which is a kind of Amazon S3 replacement. And so I basically uh, get files on my computer. Those uh, stay on my computer, which again is super important, but they get backed up to both Backblaze and then to Wasabi as well too. Now. If you're using cloud storage in a more of a storage kind of solution, here's a couple tips that I would suggest for you when working with Ableton Live Files. Number one, make sure you store your working files locally. It's kind of similar to what we talked about before, but do not try to load um, your files on a network drive. Do not try to load them remotely. Um, I, I Technically, I use Dropbox in this way. I don't store my files um um, sync my files locally from my computer to Dropbox. I just open the Dropbox browser and upload files there. What you do not want to do is leave your files there, load them using a, um, 
uh, uh, like a, a network attached storage kind of thing and try to drag those in. Uh, two, two real reasons. One, it's going to be incredibly slow and incredibly painful. And two, Live is just not going to like that. It's not meant to be used with network attached storage um, to drag things in and out. It's just not going to be a great experience. Um, and I know, uh, again, we're used to working with Google Drive and working with, uh, with documents locally, but working with a lot of audio files um, in a storage uh, scenario like that is not going to be great. So again, I would suggest have and keep all your working files locally. Um, uh, keep them on a hard drive, keep them on your internal drive. And then when you go to store those, to archive those, to back those up, that's then when we can move it to, um, uh, to that storage thing. So don't use this for working files, only for archive and backup. Second thing that's super important, have multiple backups of your project files. And I would suggest having at least one hard copy of this. Um, I can't always afford to do this when I'm working with clients, but one thing I uh, typically try to suggest is just buy a hard drive and dedicate it to a project, a specific project. You're starting a new project, down, uh, uh, purchase a actual hard drive, store all your files for that on your hard drive. But at the same time as you're working on that, um, have your files being backed up to Backblaze uh, and then use another solution. Use Arc Backup and back up uh, those to Wasabi, uh, to Google Drive, whatever it is. But make sure you have uh, multiple backups and make at least one of those backups a local backup. Now, here's what I think is maybe one of the most important uh, tips and tricks here. So let me go over to Finder and I'm going to uh, show you an Ableton Live file that I have here. So let me see if I can find something here we can work with. Okay, so here we go. Here's Will's example set project that we were working uh, on before. Now, same rules apply as before. Save as a new live project. Make sure you do collect all and save. I've already done all that. But this final step has proved highly successful for me in years and years of working with live um, in cloud storage and never having problems if I do this step for this archive phase, okay? And that step is to go to your live project and go to your live project file. And as the final thing, right click and do compress, okay? So on the Mac side of things, this is gonna create a zip file. Uh, if you're on a PC, this may be a completely different process because you're on a PC and I don't have a PC to know uh, what that process looks like exactly. But then what you wanna do at the end of that, once that file is compressed and done, then you're gonna take that and that's gonna be what you upload and archive. The reason I think that's super important is there's less chance that files get moved around. Um, I've seen particularly a lot of times when I was working with students using Google Drive, the way if you just drop your folder up and I try to download from there, it doesn't always work right. The files get moved around, they get shifted around. It doesn't seem to work very well. So if you're using cloud storage in uh, more of a backup archive way, then make sure the final step in the process for you is to do uh, uh, compress your file and to create a zip file. Again, before that, make sure you collect all and save. Before that, make sure you store things in uh, a separate project folder. Again, still do good file management, even though we're backing things up. Okay, the third way, and again, going back to talking and working with collaborators that we typically use um, cloud storage is for transfer. And obviously the most common utility for this is WeTransfer. Uh, Dropbox also has a great solution. They call it their transfer app that works well. I, I do that same thing uh, when I'm working with people because I have Dropbox, I just use Dropbox transfer app and upload that. Same rules apply here as the previous two. Uh, save in a project folder, uh, do use good file hygiene, keep everything in a separate live project so that it, not everything is together. Make sure you do collect all and save. And the third thing, just like I mentioned before, is make sure you compress your files so you have a zip file where everything's together, you know it's gonna work just fine, and then add that to WeTransfer, add that to Dropbox's transfer app uh, so that then you can easily send that and share that with a friend. So if you're trying to use Ableton Live files uh, with cloud storage, whether you're using it to uh, for sync, for storage, for uh, transferring, whatever it is, those are some generally helpful tips that uh, will allow you to do this and not have issues. I'll say in probably the past, I don't know, five, maybe even 10 years, I haven't had issues working with cloud storage if I follow those best practices. Now, uh, if you want some suggestions on, hey, what type of hard drive should I use? What backup solutions do you use, Will? What do you recommend, particularly for live performance? Then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash gear. You can download my completely free gear guide. In it, I share my favorite hard drives for live performances. I share my backup solutions that a few of them I mentioned in this video. Um, and links to all of those is included in that free gear guide. Again, completely free. You can get it by heading to fromstudiotostage.com 
slash gear. Thanks so much for watching this video. Now, uh, go create some live projects, follow these tips to share them um, correctly and to collaborate co correctly with other folks. And I'll see you next week, 10 a.m. Central for our next tutorial. Take care, everybody. Bye.